Hello, my friends. It's your friendly neighborhood lion. I would just like to take a moment of your time to talk about dreams. What are dreams and why do we have them? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what dreams are or why we have them. Depending on what psychologist you read about, depending on what professor you talk to, they will tell you different things. Some people believe that dreams are completely random. They're just firings of neural synapses in your brain at random throughout the night while you're asleep, which ends up producing an image in your brain and your mind. Some psychologists believe that it's actually organized, that it's a little bit more organized chaos, if you will, that has some type of meaning to it. And then there's other psychologists and other people on this planet that believe it's a simulation. It's literally your brain putting you in situations at night, getting you ready for any particular instance that may come up in your life. Kind of like a training, a training game, if you will. Taking the experiences you've had and then mashing them all together into a synthesis, into a, an image or a world that you can then interact with. Then there's other people that believe that it's just whatever happens that day, that previous day, your hippocampus is part of deep inside your brain. It kind of, it looks like a uh, horseshoe kind of, it kind of goes like a, a circle and it, and it just fires like this constantly and it's just um, getting more cemented in at night. It's, it's literally helping you remember the day before. So there's many different theories that go on about what dreams are and why they occur. I myself believe that it's kind of a combination of all of them. I'm just going to speak about a dream I had last night. So what I find so interesting is it, my, my, my dreams can be so based in reality. I was hanging out with an old friend of mine, my old best friend, and we were at, at a lake, you know, at a, at a body of water that we used to go to. And there were some, you know, supernatural parts of the dream as well. But at the same time, I still remember it. I still was grounded in this reality, in this waking reality. I remember that I had work the next day. I have work tomorrow. I remember that I have things that I need to do that I can't go away this weekend because I have to, I have an extra day of work the next week. I still had facts from this waking reality present in my dream. And what's also very interesting to me, like I said, is there's other dreams that I've had where it's completely supernatural. But during the moment in the dream, my mind accepts it as reality, accepts it as truth. So for example, this was last week, I had one of the most lucid or vivid dreams that you could ever, I wouldn't call it lucid, I would call it vivid, one of the most vivid, crystal clear dreams ever. I had a dream about this girl that I went to college with and we were, it was so intimate. Like I could feel, we had our, I could feel her skin. Like when we, we were touching our, our faces, I could literally feel the uh, skin of her cheek against my face as if it was real life and then later in that dream stuff started going crazy like absolutely nuts there were these i don't even know if i want to tell you guys it was just like it was weird okay it was really weird a dinosaur showed up in this room and like this like a huge dinosaur had like a t-rex came into this room and was about to eat me and like i kind of dodged it and I totally accepted this as fact. I totally understood that this was real, that dinosaurs exist, even though now in this reality, in this waking world, that's not true at all. And then later in the dream, I remember I got actually, I got shot. And then if you guys have seen The Matrix, I remember I felt it in my left rib cage, okay? I felt the, the pressure in the bullet. And I remember I could feel myself dying. And then Neo, if you've ever seen The Matrix, Neo was the doctor. He walks in the room in his black cape and he starts you know helping me whatever and I totally knew that this was exactly what was supposed to happen my, I accepted this as fact in my dream yeah of course Neo's here to help me and he's saving me I remember him doing whatever whatever it was to me and this is in the same dream as the girl and then later after that I ended up saving the girl um, from something else so I just find it so interesting that dreams have a basis in reality as well as a supernatural component which is completely non-based in reality. But in the time while you are dreaming, you accept it as true, you accept it as real. Um, and that's just a, a, an amazing thing to me. So later in my life, if I do research on this, I wanna find out what causes dreams, what is, what is there, you know, what is the parameters that are set before it in order to give rise to dreams? Because I truly don't believe, I don't, I don't wanna believe it's just totally random. It can't be totally random. Um, there's no way because some of them are just so organized and so so particular sometimes they, they incorporate aspects into my daily life and almost as if it's a premonition almost as if it's, it's telling me things that are gonna come to fruition later in life 
and then sometimes they do. You know, you ever have a moment, we call it, uh, what is it, deja vu? You know, where you're like, man, I feel like I've been here before. I feel like I've experienced this before. Well, maybe you've dreamt about it before. Um, which, once again, could just be proven by the theory that it's just a simulation. Your mind is just putting you in scenarios, putting you in situations where you might come across this later in life. So your brain doesn't want to waste any time, you know? So while you're sleeping, it's, it's doing letting you go through these experiences and by the way just a quick fact about neuroscience here you have about five to seven dreams per night and on the the sleep cycle everybody gets this wrong it makes me so angry people get this so wrong it goes stage one stage two stage three stage four not REM sleep you don't go right into REM sleep at stage four people think you got to be in the deepest part of your sleep to be in REM sleep and dreaming no you go to stage four then you go back up you go stage three stage two then you go into REM sleep. So if I scanned your brain and looked at your brain, it's as if you are awake. You have a lot of activity going on. I believe it's the beta waves. I don't want to get into the beta, delta, theta waves because I'm, I'm, I've forgotten about which one and how many hertz is each one. But I believe it's beta waves when you're awake, when you're thinking your, your brain waves are going, I forget what it is, like 30 hertz uh, per second or something. I don't know. But your brain will look, when you're dreaming, it looks like you're awake. It is not when you are in your deepest sleep, my friends. That is not when you dream, okay? And you go through about five stages per night. You go through these cycles. Um, you get your restful sleep, the most restful sleep in stage four, when the waves are very lazy. They shoot up like this, and then they stop. And then they shoot up really high, and they stop. But betas is like this, like constantly all the time, if I remember correctly. Okay, so just think about that in dreams. And let me know in, your com in the comments down below, what are some of the craziest dreams that you've had? And what are the, some of the most, on the opposite end of the spectrum, what are some of the most real dreams that have been grounded in reality to the point where you thought, this was my real life and I couldn't tell a dream from reality? Take care, my friends. Peace.